strade buona ziua bine ați venit la prezentarea tehnică a software-ului Abstra Abstra the Juniper product which you know as a very basic it is designed to manage the data center network what's the big deal you could ask everybody has some software to manage the data center switches. Uh, okay, there is a difference. Uh, for if you look carefully, uh, let me say something that is possibly slightly controversial. Uh, if you look at switches, if you look at switches that are designed and optimized to work in the data center environment, they are, I would say similar, they are at least comparable. If you prepare something like an RFP, a tender, and you want to have a choice among a number of different vendors that they could compete with a switching solution, you can pull the list of parameters, make some adjustments, and really allow the two or three or four that you wish to participate. The same sentence is not quite true when it comes to software. For contrary to the switching devices, the software solutions that are available nowadays are pretty much different. They are I would even say they are completely divergent in what they do. So uh, let me explain what Astra does and what Astra doesn't. That's another important factor. And I'm not saying that Astra is going to be the software of choice for everybody. No. But it is interesting, at least, to understand where Astra fits and what it can do for you. Uh, and uh, I bet that some of the challenges of the modern data center uh, are solved by Astra by far better than any competing solution uh, can provide you. Okay, uh, but in order to say what the solution really is, we first need to explain what problem it is trying to address. So, uh, if you look at the data center environment and the evolution that happened over the recent, uh, well, 20 years, that's at least, uh, more or less uh, how long I have observed uh, those environments personally. Uh, look, what has changed? Uh, I mean, people normally see the speed as the primary factor. Uh, but the speed is not really about the gigabits per second or well, formerly megabits per second that you deliver to each other. Not really so. It is about convergence that you get in the network and the overall reliability. Whatever happens in the network, and uh, if the network such as data center is large enough, uh, meaning tens or hundreds of devices, look, uh, data center obviously come in different uh, sizes, so uh, a large enough network, uh, if it consists of a significant number of devices will always have some defects in them. Uh, consider things like MTPF of uh, mean time between failure of specific switches. It goes in the range of tens of years, 20 years, 30 years. Well, if you have 200 devices, which is basically something like a medium, maybe slightly larger than medium-sized data center, that, that implies you will have a defect every month like a serious hardware defect of a switch. Uh, now, try to convert that into optics. So, uh, we want more of the data center. A uh, number of years ago, it was absolutely okay for everyone to have uh, some operations in the uh, network uh, performed over maintenance windows, like to declare a downtime for a couple of hours uh, at night well, at certain stage it was at night, uh, and do whatever interrupting operations are necessary in the data center. Now, it's not that it's required like always, uh, but uh, it's become a factor uh, that severely affects many of the data centers. Some of them cannot even allow a downtime longer than one second. That means whatever happens in the data center, uh, whatever happens contrary to our intents, has to be automatically, for no 
person will react, no operator will react within a second and do the necessary uh, things. Um, the network automation has to take care of every defect within a very, very short time. Now, 15 years ago, that was not exactly possible. Uh, right now, we believe we have technologies that allow that to be effectively implemented. Uh, I will just name VPN, probably the VXLAN flavor of VPN being the dominant uh, in the data center environments. Um, there are some that ask for VPN with NPLS. Uh, that's not something I'm going to cover in this presentation anyway. Uh, the thing is, it is a proper solution if we think about uh, proper convergence, standardization of protocols in the data center, uh, extending layer to services, to endpoint devices in a manner that is reliable. Uh, everybody who has seen a defect called spanning tree loop understands what it means to, for the layer network to be reliable. It's been a huge challenge. VPN does that. It does a whole lot of things on top of that, uh, like providing redundant connectivity from uh, separate switches, make it two, make it more if necessary, etc., etc. However, this solution replaced a huge number of problems that were observed in the data center, not only in data center, but the, they were the primarily visible. It replaced those problems with a single difficulty. The single difficulty being complexity. Uh, not sure how many of you are uh, familiar with EVPN, like in-depth EVPN. There are a number of networks that I know of in the data centers that are manually operated with EVPN. Manually configured, uh, then, you know, whenever troubleshooting is necessary, operators log into the devices, make the changes, make the analysis, etc., etc. It's possible. It's possible, but then again, it is quite excessive in terms of timing. For if your real desire is to have a change in a data center, like spinning up a new virtual network somewhere in the data center and delivering it to specific devices, uh, if that translates to, say, seven or ten different commands in the CLI, uh, that are not exactly uh, the most user-friendly that you could think of. Uh, route targets, route distinguishers, communities, uh, policies that are built on top, etc., etc. It's doable, but it's tough. And the intent was simple. The intent was simple to get the connectivity from point A to point B. Uh, so, um, I mean, it's pretty frequent the case that a solution to difficult problems is difficult by its nature. That is exactly where Abstra needs to come. For what we have observed over a number of years was the fact that the complexity itself was a reason to actually avoid the solution as a whole. People did deploy in their data center technologies that we consider to be by far inferior to VPN, just because of the fact that they couldn't handle properly the management overhead that comes with VPN as a technology addressed on a low level. So something had to be built on top. And that is abstract. Uh, Astra is not an original Juniper product, by the way, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it was acquired by Juniper. Uh, originally, it was an independent product. Uh, independent product designed to do yeah, management of the data center. But please understand, management of the data center switches uh, in the abstract flavor doesn't really cover everything 
that you might want to do on the switches. Abstract takes care of just one thing. Abstract takes care of the VPN as such. Underlay, overlay, and all the concepts that you typically build on top. It has a single purpose. It has a purpose of being absolutely efficient. Uh, meaning that what you insert as an input to the software it are some very basic information, such as there is a network from one point to another point. Okay, that network has some IP addressing, and Upstream needs to take care of everything else. All those difficulties with configuration are hidden. Uh, now, just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, uh, I have been running demos, live demos of abstract deployments uh, for quite a while, uh, some of them being on site if necessary. How long does it take for Abstra? Uh, Abstra comes as a package which is basically a virtual machine that you just deploy in any environment, make it VMware, make it KVM, uh, Hyper-D, whatever. You spin up the virtual machine and you start configuring. How long does it take for the network, which consists just of the interconnected devices, yeah, what wiring still has to be there, right? Uh, so you have interconnected devices, you spin up abstract, the devices are with plan configuration, uh, and you want to come up with a fully functional network. Fully functional network meaning uh, appropriate VLANs with appropriate IP addressing, separated into appropriate routing zones or verse, uh, if you want to name them that way, uh, they are all up and running. So the network is 100% ready and operational. Two hours. Two hours is good enough for that whole thing to start up. Some competing software products are not even possible to get installed within two hours. Okay? Uh, it sounds unbelievable. It is something that has to be seen. Okay, if I speak a lot during the demo, then it might take three hours. But that's a different story, okay? Please don't blame abstract for that. I'm saying it's an intent-based software. So our intent is simple. The resulting configurations are something that you probably don't want to take deep care of. Not there is no direct interaction that should be needed. I mean, we could play with them manually if necessary, uh, or do some other tricks, but by default, Abstract generates a something and it is designed and tested to be good already. It's not covering 100% of these cases, please understand it. It covers 90%. But these are the 90% of things that need to be handled like, most of the time. Uh, it doesn't start there. It doesn't start there for deployment is just the first step. Uh, configurations and ongoing configurations, well, not sure how your data centers are operating. Some of them are probably those that are configured once and let run like, forever. Uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays, a much frequenter case is that uh, where you know, specific services, virtual machines or containers or whatever objects you are building are very dynamic based on the load as an example. Uh, additional virtual machines may spin up uh, to cover the to you know to convey the excess traffic accordingly uh, based on some defects that are observed. Yeah, those uh, applications can be self-healing, so some additional objects can be brought up or uh, brought down whenever necessary. The network needs to follow. This is pretty dynamic. Now there's been a time where the network was actually at the obstacle for, you know, applications were sort of running and ready to handle that kind of uh, dynamic uh, approach. Um, not quite so with network. Abstract is designed to cover that part. Um, so 
but it doesn't stop there. As I said, uh, one important thing to understand is the help abstract can offer you when it comes to troubleshooting the network. The moment you configure something, the moment you define your intent, what you want of the network, whether it's day one or day two operation, uh, so it can be initial deployment, it can be later on, Abstra starts monitoring for specific objects that can verify whether your intent is correctly running in the network. Uh, to be more precise, as I uh, to give you an example, Abstra takes care of things like routing tables. So whenever you insert a new network, you know, inserting a new network in the VPN VXLAN environment is actually a harsh operation. For it's not only that a specific network appears uh, once uh, in the default routing table. Uh, if it is an overlay, it may appear as some objects, type 2, type 5 routes in the VPN tables, in BGP, etc., etc. So um, <coughs> they are readable, but they are not exactly human friendly. If you have to read the routing tables throughout your whole network manual, just in order to make sure nothing is missing, it's doable. But it is time consuming. It's much better when a software such as Abstract takes care of that and alerts you that something in the network went wrong. Now, 99% of other software solutions do it the following manner. Whatever it is, you define something, you provision something, you need to log in or uh, switch over to that part of environment that does the monitoring and you define the change that you have made so that the specific objects are being pulled correctly and verified uh, against uh, your expectancies. Okay, that's not the case with Astra. That happens automatically. Whatever you define is by its nature monitored immediately without any further intervention. I said that already. The speed that you get configuring things is absolutely outstanding. This is optimized to be 100% efficient. There is a trade-off. As always, there is a design trade-off with that. You don't get to configure everything or not natively everything. You see, if we inserted every single option that is available on the switches, the software would no longer be simple. So, um, one of the design questions in the internal conversation that we had in Junta, uh, when we asked for a new feature to be developed in Astra, is whether it will make sense, whether it simplifies something or actually contributes to the overall complexity. And if that question is not answered correctly, we would build another monster with every single feature in there, just finding a something would probably mean that it would be, again, easier to do things based on CLI. That's not the way we want to do it. This is an important heritage that I'm mentioning here. Abstract is still and will remain a multi-vendor solution. Yes, you can manage Juniper devices, but importantly, you can also cover the parts of your network that are that have nothing to do with Juniper. Maybe Cisco, Arista, some others. Okay, those others are basically uh, whatever vendor uses uh, Enterprise Sonic. Cumulus. Okay, that's a part of different discussion if necessary. It is not only it is not only the fact that you can configure Juniper Network, XO, Cisco Network, XO, Arista Network. It is also about interoperability. That's a very hard and important topic in many data center environments for, you see, uh, VPN is a standard, right? Yeah, it is a standard. Now, 
having said that, uh, if you want to implement and interoperate between two or more different vendors, getting the configuration on both sides that would actually do it, it is a hard job. Really, it is a hard job. Um, it, it takes a project which will easily run for weeks, if not months. Now, without flights actually being taken care of, the configurations that you will see, well, I can speak for the Juniper devices, there are some details of those configurations that you probably wouldn't think of if you were to configure it manually. Uh, a simple case would be how is your PGP structure underlay and overlay configured so both of them are external PGP peerings between the switches uh, most of the design guys, with manual design guys at Juniper point at one of them being internal, the other being external uh, why is that? No, okay, any of those approaches will work uh, the one that Abstra has taken generates a little bit longer set of configurations with some additional effects that we can discuss in detail if necessary. Uh, but the primary reason why it is done that way is because some others could have difficulty uh, with configuration that sets two different PGP peerings between the same set of device, one for underlay and the overlay, one of them being internal, the other one being external. Juniper wouldn't have problems with that, but some other vendors might. For that simple reason, uh, for that simple reason, everything is done in a way that allows for interoperability. There are some caveats, obviously. Mixing specific configurations uh, might not be, I would say, advisable, but generally you can interoperate different devices whenever necessary. Um, go ahead. You said it's a multi-vendor? Yes. Will it be able to patch this whole switch? Yes. Any other? Yes. Cisco switches. Yes, it can configure and take care of Cisco switches. What, what, what do you mean patch? Patch. So, 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 so yes. You, you can upload the files to Abstra, which are then uh, pushed over to the devices as you request. That's one of the supported functionalities. Um, it doesn't access those software reports, it just manually up. The repository, yes, it, it does have a repository. Okay, uh, speeding up a little bit, uh, I will take you through general configuration of Abstra. Uh, originally I was intending to run a demo, but uh, 45 minutes are probably a little bit too short of a time to do that properly, so just screenshots. So first thing to understand. Uh, the first thing that you do with Abstra is you design a network. Uh, this has to be understood correctly uh, for, you know, that's a typical uh, difficulty when it comes to those software um, products that are, as we say, intent-based. What is an intent-based product? It is the one that takes your intent and translates it into the low-level configurations, as in this example. Not the other way around. It doesn't try to figure out what your intent was when you configure the switches the way you have configured them. It's important to understand. So um, in the software, the software is the place where you define how you want your switches to be connected, how you want your switches to be utilized, and how you want your configurations to look like, the high level of configurations. You can obviously play with that a little bit later. Not the other way around, which puts a little bit of a challenge when you are to work with a brownfield environment where you have switches in some existing configurations already and you want Abstract to take care of that. If time allows, I will speak for a while about some strategies that are possible in those cases. Now, for the data center, it is important to understand that Abstract doesn't support any topology, like 
have been possible topology that we come up with. Uh, fortunately, uh, in the data centers, that would be rare to implement something out of uh, those typical designs. Those typical designs are basically leaf and spine, and they cover like 90% of use cases. Astra covers 95% of use cases. For it, uh, also allows you to configure one layer below leaves. These are called in Astra terminology access switches. Uh, at one level above the spines, which is uh, in actual they are called super spines. Um, whenever your design falls into that category, it is supported by Abstra. Uh, yes, a, a single Abstra instance can manage multiple instances uh, of such topologies. Uh, in Abstra, they are called blueprints. Uh, so interconnecting multiple data centers. Um, in an arbitrary topology, but each of them, those data centers being even spine, yes, that's what Abstra does very well. A couple of concepts which are very necessary to understand. Abstra, it, okay, the devices that you configure in Abstra by their nature, the devices that you use in the design are so-called logical devices. What is a logical device? It's an abstract uh, which is which is nothing but uh, you know a definition that a, it's any device that says that has for instance 48 ports of a specific speed plus a couple of ports as a nothing that's it it is not required at the design stage to say whether it's a specific Juniper device or Cisco device it's not even required to say that it is any particular vendor at all. The designs work across different vendors. Look, at certain stage, if the need comes that you have to replace a working or primarily malfunctioning device with a something, maybe with a different vendor, you just make a couple of clicks to say that right now, the device that used to be Juniper and had 48, 25 Kiki ports. Sorry, I have to utilize a Cisco device that has 30 to 100 Kiki ports, but splitable to the 25 Kiki uh, speeds. And Abstra will do the conversion automatically within less than a second. Just imagine the project it would take to do such a thing. So it's a huge benefit. Obviously, at certain stage, uh, those logical devices have to be mapped to something real, but that's the last step in the operation that happens, and it's changeable uh, during the normal operation. Okay, uh, if you log into Abstra initially to get things configured, you will find a little bit of difficulty uh, understanding the naming convention that is used. So I just mentioned that Abstra uses three terms that are not that intuitive in the design. One of them being RAC. Okay, that's still fair enough. Uh, RAC is basically everything from the leaf switch downwards. So leaf switches, a pair of leaf switches, uh, typically. Uh, some access switches is present and the servers. The servers, which are basically not managed ob object by Abstra, generally not managed by Abstra directly, uh, but they are used as a reference for Abstra needs to know what is going to attach and in what topology to the specific uh, switches that are located in the rack. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a physical rack. It can be representation of something much bigger than a single rack whenever necessary. Um, so that's rack. Adding spine devices and super spine devices, if you use that kind of topology, uh, that's a higher level. It's called template in abstract. So once you have a template view, that means you have a design, but a design is still completely abstract. It's not something instantiated. If you want to have a specific instance that is a really existing implementation of a template, we build a so-called blueprint. Blueprint is a single real topology, leaf and spine with super spines and access switches uh, whenever necessary. Uh, a single topology, all 
Okay, it takes one more thing uh, that is necessary for the implementation to become real. Uh, it takes specific resources assigned to such a blueprint. Uh, obviously, uh, you need to provide uh, your design with things like IP addressing ranges, uh, typically drawn from a pool. Uh, unless you really want to manually set some things, uh, you know, individually per link of a device like loopbacks, you can do that. I wouldn't advise doing that for in a large network, it would probably lead to overall complexity. But uh, uh, once you assign those pools and define a couple of parameters within two or three minutes, you have already a working network. Mm -hmm. Things that Abstra does automatically without asking you for just about anything are going to be uh, entire underlay structure, uh, how the BGPP links are made, and all the policies. So underlay and overlay, not yet transmitting anything of value to the servers, within a couple of minutes is readily available. Don't take it as a promise. Whoever asks you for a demo, uh, for instance, at the booth, I can easily do that. Um, I mean, it is a huge difference to actually see that happen. Okay, that's the book. Let me quickly skip through this slide. Uh, obviously, the most interesting part, the most important part about Abstra, the one that you will uh, operate mostly on uh, in a real world network, or, you know, those slides that I've shown so far are basically for the introduction, like the zero phase where you deploy the network. Uh, this is VPN and the virtual networks, they have two networks, they have three networks with IP addressing, delivering them to specific switches. Okay, please understand Abstra takes care of VRFs, so you can have uh, IP VPNs across the network, um, separate routing domains. Why, why would you want to do that? Well, typically the use case is uh, for some firewalls to take care of some of the routing. Uh, like uh, you, you might have multiple subnets that uh, correspond to a single security zone in the firewall and then uh, route between those subnets uh, using switches. Uh, however, whenever, uh, whenever you need to go outside of that security zone, it's a firewall that needs to route, well, not only route, but probably take care of some um, deeper analysis of what is really happening and whether that is supposed to be allowed or not. Um, so, uh, routing zones, that, does, that is the term we use for VRFs, uh, VXLANs, VLAN virtual networks, as they are called in abstract terminology, uh, and uh, last but not least, so-called connectivity templates that define how those networks are delivered to the endpoint devices typically servers. Uh, look, normally they can be, those can be very easy definitions such as uh, what is your list of VLANs delivered as layer 2 from, uh, from the switch towards the, the server, the host. Uh, however, they can go much further. Uh, you can easily have uh, routing protocol peerings with policies defined towards, uh, say, specific virtual machines that you have connected to your switches. Uh, an interesting thing to notice about the Juniper solution here is that uh, uh, the routing protocol peerings can be not only local, but they can also traverse the VXLAN network, so they can go to remote switches. That is a bit of a mind-blowing exercise, what's happening when you have a firewall or a cluster of firewalls uh, connected to uh, different pairs of switches, and that cluster of firewalls needs to have uh, routing protocol peerings and every peering that you define in the cluster actually works. The pair that is local and, and was the pair that is remote from the perspective of the active firewall. Whenever something flips over uh, to the other firewall, uh, all the peerings can stay there. It significantly reduces convergence from the firewall perspective. Um, this is high, I mean, please notice one thing. Uh, we don't define 
uh, per specific network interface in here, uh, we don't define uh, the list, just the list of VLANs. It is by connectivity templates. Uh, the reason why we do it that way uh, is because of the complexity. Uh, so uh, it is the worst nightmare, uh, nightmare to have uh, the configuration where everything is, uh, you know, uh, port one of switch one, VLAN one, two, three, four, five. Port two of switch one, VLAN one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Etc. Etc. If you have to handle switches, forget it. Typically, it's not the case. Typically, uh, it's a completely different approach where you have a specific group of ports. First, thirty ports. They are supposed to have the same number, of, uh, same set of VLANs. So that's why uh, connectivity templates come very, very handy. Uh, if you have integration of Astra towards VMware, that can also be automated. For uh, Abstract can read the VMware configuration from the distributed switch and see what virtual machines are deployed on specific hosts, and adjust which VLANs are really delivered to the endpoints based on what it reads from VMware. As an example, um, large scale of troubleshooting options that you have uh, in this topology. Uh, Okay, Abstract reads automatically a number of parameters, it sees them, it also, uh, I mean, if something happens like an interface goes down, typically multiple events uh, or multiple failures happen in, uh, in the environment, uh, so it's uh, interface going down, PGP peeling going down, routing table discrepancy, etc. There is a place uh, in Abstra uh, which is a root cause analysis. So if you have multiple things uh, shining in red, uh, you can go there to see which is actually the reason uh, for the overall failure that you observe. You don't have to do that manually. Um, the things that you can see as Abstra validates them, uh, yes, you can tune them. Uh, Abstra collects a number of things by default. Uh, you can change them. Theoretically, you can define your own probes, your own definitions. Um, having said that, it is a bit of PS job, professional services job to do that if you need to step outside of what is delivered by Abstra. Abstra comes with a lo very long list of possible probes what it can check for. Uh, they are typically good enough or tunable. Uh, you can define something on your own, but that's not the easiest of the interfaces that you see. As you see in here, BGP is being verified, uh, routing table, including VPN tables if necessary, are verified, etc. etc. Cabling. Uh, that's one thing I haven't mentioned. The abstract spins up LLDP by default immediately. And uh, uh, if there is a change in topology, or for instance, you start deploying a new network, a uh, completely new network, and you have not defined, and you have not defined anything uh, which interface connects well, abstract obviously by default assumes some things and assigns interfaces out of specific ranges by, by random, I, I need to say. However, once it connects to the real devices, it will read the LDP uh, table and make sure that uh, the configurations reflect what you have with the cable. Uh, a mind-blowing exercise if you consider a scenario where someone inadvertently flips over two cables, they still lead up in green. Uh, Abstract can adjust to the new configuration within one click. One click. And the conf entire configuration, not just the interface names uh, as they appear in the config, but whatever they are used for in PGP, etc., etc., these things get converted automatically. Uh, and to a network visibility, okay, that's an item where I see still a room for improvement, which is kind of scheduled for this year. Uh, right now, Abstract collects excessive number of details such as packet counters, error counters, etc. What it doesn't have as of today 
is per flow telemetry. Uh, so if you want to verify whether packets from a specific application to a specific user, you know, pair of IP addresses and ports and things like that, how they really went through the network. Uh, by the way, this is a difficult question if you have a redundant network. Uh, so um, it's not done as of today. Uh, Abstract collects just general statistics. Then again, uh, as those things are pretty much dynamic by nature, you really need them. For if any of the two possible or four possible paths is affected, the flow can eventually move from one path to the other. So you might want to see everything. Uh, EVPN, as said, is monitored carefully. Uh, Time Voyager, you, you can roll back with the configuration. There is that workflow of committing a configuration to prepare a configuration that's staged, and only after it's green and verified by after that it is you know, working uh, reasonable as a whole, uh, you deploy the whole thing. If it doesn't happen correctly, you can roll back to any version that's there. Uh, Abstract can integrate uh, easily into VMware, as mentioned. It's a read-only configuration in, at this terms of um, handling the distributed switch with NSX. It's more complex, but uh, because of time constraints, let me skip that part. That part. Uh, Abstract also allows for very, very advanced programming, if necessary. Yes, um, it doesn't have to be the topmost system in your network. Uh, internally, it uses a so-called graph database, a graph database contrary to typical relational or SQL databases is the one where, you know, objects uh, by their nature are fairly small, these are not long tables, uh, however, uh, the relationships can form very long chains. That's how the graph database is optimized and uh, if you need to pull something of abstract Abstract. You can easily write a query uh, to get additional correlations what you have, of what you have in the network. As I said, it doesn't have to be the topmost uh, the topmost system in the network. As an example here, I'm showing the integration of Abstract with Terraform. Not sure how many of you know what Terraform is used to, for. Uh, this is typically that server, that application part, so people in the organizations who handle applications, they typically use something of that kind, like Abstract being a very common choice, uh, sorry, Terraform being a common choice there. Uh, yes, you can make them all the definitions, uh, you can make them uh, available uh, via uh, specific uh, Terraform, uh, Terraform uh, configuration files. Uh, Look, that's one way to do it. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, one challenge, how do you think uh, I make the whole network with all the correct VLANs and connectivity templates and verse available uh, within uh, less than an hour? Uh, obviously, uh, the way to do it is having an access spreadsheet detailing what VLANs you want to have in the network. You can upload it directly to Astra and test it on. Uh, every command that is available in Astra is within API, uh, so uh, sometimes you don't even interact with GUI directly, there are some deployments which work in that manner. Look, it's been only a snapshot of what Astra can do for you, short one. Thank you very much for your attendance. How is the licensing? Uh, is the software to very complication? License. The question about licensing. Licensing is strictly per switch. One switch equals one license. Period. End of story. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Any switch. If I want to manage the location, you can do that. You can you can have it either way. Uh, so you could have one software managing everything or you can have multiple instances of the software managing in data center, each data center separately. Licensing-wise, it doesn't matter. For one license, it's one switch. Mm -hmm. So, we don't care. Whatever suits you best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me give uh, two awards for questions. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, please come over to the booth.
Thank you very much.